When we talk about movie trilogies, one trilogy that sticks out for me prominently is the Caesar's Planet of the Apes trilogy that we got last decade. And it really kind of came out of nowhere. It was come up as a reboot of the Planet of the Apes franchise, which the last time they did that was the terrible Tim Burton, Mark Wahlberg version. And really much we all looked at it like nothing's going to hold up to that original classic movie, which, you know, maybe doesn't hold up to the everyone's standards to today. And Rise came out of nowhere, and it was actually pretty good. And then you see Dawn, which is absolutely one of the best sequels of all time, and War, which was not the film that I expected it to be, but on rewatches significantly improves that film to such a higher degree. And now I look back at that entire trilogy and think, yeah, that is one of the best film trilogies of all time. Let's not make another one after that and ruin the legacy of Caesar. But money is not going to be left on the table. And today we have Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes to talk about. This is a film that takes place 300 years later after the reign of Caesar. A young ape goes on a journey that will lead him to question everything he's been taught about the past and make choices that will define the future for apes and humans alike. This movie was announced like forever ago. It's finally here. It's directed by Wes Ball, who did films like the Maze Runner trilogy which I thought was pretty decent, but it never blew me away. Honestly, when this film was announced, I really wasn't that excited for it because I love the last trilogy so much and I just don't know where you could go with it. And specifically taking place so many generations later and leaving behind Caesar, there's an idea of, yeah, like I would love to see where they can go further into the future to get closer to the original Planet of the Apes. But at the same time, it is a detriment that could easily worsen and make this franchise not as great. And I'm so, so happy to sit here and tell you that I was wrong. I was so wrong about this movie. In fact, this was one of those films that I didn't even watch a trailer for. I, I was excited for the fact that it is another Planet of the Apes trilogy. And like from the images and stills, it all looked good. And I knew this film was probably going to at least be good from early word. But I didn't expect for it to be great exceptional, beautiful, and most of all, incredible. In fact, it's a fabulous evolution of what we got from Caesar's trilogy and adds on top of that and specifically what it has to say. And what Wes Ball has been really much tacking this film up to be is Apocalypto in the Planet of the Apes world. And I love that because thematically there's so much that he can richly dive into this. And I was so, so happy with this movie. Couple gripes here and there. We'll definitely talk all about it. No spoilers as well. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button though if you are new here and you like talking movies, TV, and games over here on a daily basis. We also do a podcast on my second channel. You can find the links down below all to those. And with that said, I definitely want to start talking about the pros for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And the number one thing I actually want to talk about is not the performances, not the visual effects. We're going to all talk about that. It is actually what Wes Ball did with the dynamics of the apes this time. You know, it's set, again, generations later. I think they've specifically said it's set like 300 years later. All the apes can talk now. They are thriving to a certain degree. And it's fabulous to see that, that like, again, for first off, a budget of like $160 million, give or take, this film looks insane, and it's amazing to me how it looks better than like most blockbusters today, but you're taking apes that are living in a society. Some of the apes know who Caesar was, and Caesar's little phrase, apes together, strong together. That one phrase goes such a mileage in here that it was really quite touching to see what they were able to do with Caesar's legacy and what Caesar built up and how apes may take what he said and use it to a different degree of what they might want. I think it's a really poetic thing to what we saw Koba trying to do in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and ties back to that, but also loosens into this generations later. And I also think it's kind of poetic to how it mirrors our world with historical leaders and specifically how they have used religion in a certain aspects to influence themselves and influence others. And in a way, they towed up Caesar as this religious figure within this world. 
it is really fascinating. It's something that they truly didn't have to do. They could name drop Caesar here and there and just say, yeah, this was the original ape, but we're doing our own shit and we don't care. No, they they used him prominently where it makes that original trilogy like essential to this one and the world it's building off of, but at the same time building onto its own thing so many years later. I thought that was fabulous. I think West Ball did a fantastic job there. I also think it was a fabulous idea to not focus in on a human side. Yes, there is a human character in here who is brilliantly played by Freya Allen. I really liked her in The Witcher. I honestly think she's exceptional here. But she, for the most part, is not the main character. This center of the attention of here is the apes, which every film has started to lean more and more towards the apes to where we finally get this. And for me, I think that was such a strong decision. And it's the one thing that while this film is two and a half hours, it's the longest apes film yet. It is a runtime that I think you can feel it at times. We'll talk about it in my issues. But it's one that I actually think was needed. And I think there's a little bit of me that could say, maybe I wouldn't have minded if it was a little bit longer because I just wanted to keep thriving in this generation of Planet of the Apes and getting to know a little bit more about our characters. The first 45, 50 minutes is just literally establishing the main new character, Noah, who I think Owen Teague does a phenomenal job in. I think Noah is great. And that was my biggest worry going into this film is falling in love with a new ape and having to like him just as much as Caesar. Because by the end of Rise, I was so in on Caesar. Don, you instantly love him completely in the war. It's like, yeah, fuck yeah, do Caesar, do whatever you want. And Noah, by the end of this film, and mostly primarily after the first 50 minutes, I was locked into his story. I was so fascinated by his character. And a lot of it, his personal journey he's going on is maybe a little bit cliche and we've seen before in so many different elements of storytelling, but for a primitive time in the apes world, it fits for what's going on and it makes sense. And it just builds and builds and builds within each act to where you really love Noah. And I can see myself in the future loving this new generation of apes just as much as I did love the last trilogy. So very happy with that. Owen does a phenomenal job in here. Also, shout out to Kevin Durand, who was phenomenal in Abigail earlier this year, but man, he plays Proximus Caesar. I needed a little bit more of him in here personally, but I thought he was fabulous in here and easily one of my favorite antagonists in every Planet of the Apes films ever. Last but not least, I do want to give a shout out to Peter Mackin's Raka. I thought Raka was such a big standout of this, and again, Love when we get some orangutan attention here because Maurice, he was one of my favorites in the original trilogy. That's where I also just go back to West Ball and what he was able to do in here. Like specifically his whole idea of Apocalypto and the Planet of the Apes franchise and then touching into like the religious zealots and what like apes could do with Caesar's words so many years later. But also it just goes down to what he was able to do with the visual effects. I think there's an argument to be made that the visual effects in here are just as stunning as Avatar The Way of Water, which I think is still one of the most gorgeous and technically advanced films of the last decade. But this is right up there with there. And I really noticed it primarily in the third act when there is one action scene between two different apes. And you see this action scene going on and like just the attention to detail, like the cuts, the marks, the bruises, the wrinkles on his face, the wrinkles on his hands and his paws and everything like that just really knocked me back and went, wow, <laughs> that's so real. Continues to blow me away with what they're able to accomplish in each and every one of these movies. And like I just mentioned, the action in here is great. It's not as abundant as we've seen in the past. This is very much more of a generational epic of storytelling, one that takes its time with its characters, with its nuances, and actually has thematically some bigger things to say. But don't get me wrong, when we do get to the action, it is pretty damn sweet. With that said, that's about as much as I can say without getting into spoilers. All I can say is that I hope we get an announcement of the next one soon. If Wes Ball and the writers on this are very much just know what they're going on into this next adventure of the planet of the apes. I am totally in. And also for anyone worried that West ball was going to be handling the brand new legend of Zelda live action film. I, I, honestly, 
just within the first like 20 minutes, I was completely sold on what he can do with an entire world. And I think he's going to do a great job there. But I do want to talk about my issues with the film. And it really just stems from a couple different things. So first off, I do think the film is a little tad bit slow. And I know it's two hours and 25 minutes, two and a half hours, whatever you may say. And it's weird because I have that complaint. But I don't know what I would take out. Like, I don't know if I was just a little bit tired because I went and saw this right after work. But the other devil's advocate to that that I would want to play is I also had the issue that I wish some characters and some sequences and some things just got a little bit more of an expansion. There's so many things thematically that they're trying to play off in this film that weirdly enough, it feels like you could have gotten like halfway through this movie and actually finished it like if you would have set up the beginning and really built up this journey that the film could have ended I, I there's a lot in there trust me like they would have had to add a lot but I would have been completely fine with it and then the next piece of it gets us in to Kevin Durant's Caesar and I think that would have been a little bit more interesting to me because there's so much with the whole Roman Empire aspect that they touch into this. And then there's so much that I love from the beginning of this and touching into this new generation of apes that I just wanted to play around in this world more. I wanted more from that. But to really say, that's my only issue with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I think you'll just leave wanting more of this world, more of this generation of what we are seeing and I think you might leave going, I wish they developed this and this just a tad bit more. But they really went for two specific things to develop. One, Caesar's legacy and what he left behind and what the apes are using it for now. As well, our new character, Noah, which are two very expansive things that they do need to touch on so much in this to make us fall in love with the future of this. And I think all those complaints they could easily formulate into the next film if they need be and they have those plans. That's why I think Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is a beautiful and incredible evolution of what came before, adding on to Caesar's legacy in a way that mirrors our real world history and religion influences leaders through our time in an epic movie that instantly made me fall for its new character. I can't recommend Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes enough. If you like the last trilogy, you're going to like this one. If you love the last trilogy, I think you're going to come away loving this one as well. Maybe even thinking it's one of your personal favorites. For me right now, if I were to rank like the last trilogy in this one, I would go Dawn. I would go Kingdom. Tied with Kingdom would be War. And then, of course, Rise. I think they're all pretty damn good films. But those top three are just exceptional. And I cannot wait to see again what they do with this franchise next. So, of course, with all that said, I'm going to give Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes an A-. minus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And, of course, until next time, stay classy.